Fora TV. The world is thinking. And it was with these concerns that we eventually came up with the idea, let's see if we can get people to develop a completely false childhood event that they were lost in a shopping mall, that they were frightened and crying and lost for an extended time, that they were very upset, but that they were eventually rescued by an elderly person and reunited with their family. Well, that was the plan. How were we going to do it? The way we did it is we recruited our subjects, we told them that we had talked to their mother or father, we actually had, in preparation of these materials, that we found out some things that happened to them when they were children, uh, and that we want to ask them about these experiences. We then told them about some true memories, things the mother and father really said really did happen when the grown-up subject was a child, five or six years old, and then the made-up experience about being lost in the shopping mall or some other department store if there were no shopping malls where the, where the person grew up and so on. And after three suggestive interviews with our adult subjects, we found that a quarter of them fell sway to the suggestion and developed all or part of this made-up experience that developed a memory, at least partially or completely, of being lost in this particular way. People criticized that study after we first uh, publicly reported it and published it. They said, you know, getting lost is so common. Uh, can't you show that you, would plant, you could plant a memory for something that would be a little bit more unusual or bizarre if it actually had happened? And other investigators came along and provided an answer to that concern showing, for example, that you could get people to believe that when they were a kid, they went to a family wedding, and there was the table with a punch bowl on it, and they accidentally knocked into the punch bowl and spilled punch all over the parents of the bride. Also about a quarter of subjects falling sway to that suggestive memory. That work done by a professor at Western Washington University. In another very fine piece of work from uh, University of British Columbia in Canada, uh, the research group convinced their subjects that they had been a victim of a vicious animal attack or a serious indoor or outdoor accident. Uh, they were getting more and more sophisticated because they succeeded in planting a complete false memory in 26% of their subjects and a partial false memory in an additional 30% of subjects. These are just a few of the examples where really rich false memories have been planted uh, by something that we sometimes call the lost in the mall technique. We've talked to your parents, we learned these things happened to you. It's a pretty strong form of suggestion, but it's not the only way that people develop false memories. We've now done studies where we use guided imagination and we can get people to develop false memories. This is the kind of thing that goes on in some psychotherapy circles. You don't uh, remember that you were abused, but you've got all the symptoms. You've got an eating disorder. You're depressed. Everyone I've seen with those symptoms was sexually abused. You can't remember, but you need to remember, the patient is told. And so why don't you just close your eyes and imagine who might have done this to you? How old might you have been? Where might it have happened? We have found that those guided imaginations can make people believe in things that didn't happen.